The eyes of the world are on 25-year-old Casta Semenya, and she runs away and wins it brilliantly. She has destroyed them in the last 200 metres. Well, that smashes the world list by almost two seconds. I'm a woman. I am different. I accept myself. I celebrate myself. And there's no one can do anything about it. Today, we're talking with two-time Olympian, three-time world champion track and field Olympian, Castor Semenya, whose story we've been following closely for the last decade. Now, if you want to hear Castor's backstory, please go back and check out her season one podcast episode we've done together. I'm really excited to chat with Castor because she's such an empowering woman with a beautiful story and a beautiful career that you don't want to miss it. Hi guys, um, I'm Casta Semenya, um, two times uh, Olympic champion, three times world champion, over 800 meter women, and yeah, uh, that's what I do, <laughs> I'm a runner. <laughs> I'm so Star Trek, I just admire you so much, so it's just an honor to be with you. The sports world's highest court ruled yesterday that Semenya must take medication to reduce her unusually high testosterone level if she wants to compete. The court called its decision on the South African runner acceptable discrimination. South African double Olympic 800 meter champion Kasta Semenya was discriminated against by World Athletics. Well, the case comments in the high European courts in Ohio. It is a high court and they've appealed. I advocate for human rights. I advocate for gender equality, you know, inclusivity, inclusivity and diversity. It's about protecting, you know, these young girls that are coming from uh, these disadvantaged backgrounds. These girls that cannot fight for themselves, that cannot voice out. So if I can be the voice for them, I go there, I fight for them. And I'll make sure that I do anything for them because I don't want them to face what I face. It's not fair for an individual to say, I am going to discriminate one, and then you say it's necessary. It can never be necessary to discriminate one. These court cases, they can never end. As long as we have not reached, you know, and be satisfied, we will always go back. Thank you, because we need more voices, more leaders, more powerhouse like you to drive those changes, because there are a lot that needs to be done in many disciplines across all sports for everyone. Coming out of that trial, hopefully things better go your direction. I have all my fingers and all of my toes crossed. What is the world for fem- for women athletes everywhere that you want to see? Women needs to be respected. Women needs to be given opportunity to decide what is right for women's sports. Organizations have been formed by men. We know women were were never meant to do sports. They, they, they were never there. They were never considered anything. But all those people that are out there are men deciding what a woman should look like, how a woman should you know behave. It should be us women. If women are respected, women are given you know opportunity. Women are given equal treatment as men are. I'll be happy, then I'll give them a respect. But at the moment, it's a, you know, zero. It's zero. But it goes in hand in hand, you know, with we as women. What is it that we do for each other? Do we really respect one another? Do we really support one another? You know what I'm saying? So we, we, we got we to gotta come clean as women, you know, in the world of sports to say, look, enough is enough. But if we chicken out, we will always face this, you know, situations time and again and again and the next generation will still face the same thing it's about time we as women we decide what is right for us women caster president yes caster for president <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm still young for <laughs> to get into that stress <laughs> but i can be a president of women women's president yes 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 i can advocate yes. for that yes. yes well before we get to caster becoming the next president of south africa We want to share a little bit about her achievement for those who don't know. No doubt, most of the attention will be on the young woman from South Africa, Kasta Semenya. The best in the world now and has been 
for the last few major championships. Double gold at Olympics and Worlds. Wow, 155.17. It's the fastest time in the world. It's a lifetime best. And Casta Semenya, well, two Olympic golds, now three world championship golds over 800 meters. Caster, you killed it professionally and then you have really been drawn through the mud. What have you taken from all this? How has this changed you? As an individual, um, a human, you know, you have feelings, you know, um, you feel, uh, you get hurt. But I think for me, uh, it has created opportunity for me to have the best relationship, you know, with myself. I always say, if I can't control something, um, I just leave it like that. And it has taught me to understand me, you know, as an individual. Now I can sit in my own house and then relax, not to worry about you know, what other people think of me. You know, just think about what is it that I think of me. When I wake up each and every morning, I look at that mirror and then I love what it reflects there. I don't have to worry about an 80 year old man out there who wants to, you know, regulate, who wants to, you know, uh, tell me uh, how I should look like to be a woman. You, you understand? That's the power I have. Self love. I may, they, they may have blocked me from the track. It had, it, yeah, it did hurt me a little bit, but in my mind, I say, you make them change rules, don't you? It was a slender victory for Semenya Castor, but a victory nonetheless. The European Court of Human Rights ruled by a majority of four votes to three that the champion runner had been discriminated against by rules in track and field. The only obstacles that I had to come across is just the, you know, the self-identity, learning you know, how to love myself, how to control myself, my emotions, how to mute, and also how to be confident. That's, that can be a very difficult skill to master because when you've been questioned and when you've been judged, it can be very hard. You can have that low self-esteem. That was a challenge. But then I overcame it. You know, I overcame that. You just gave me such goosebumps. You are preaching to the choir on Mind this blown. one. Mind yeah. blown. Um, you have such a level of confidence about you and reading your book, it was clear that you've always had this sense of confidence, that you knew who you were at a young age. What advice would you give to people who haven't figured that out yet, who are struggling with that identity piece? What advice would you give to them? For each and every particular individual, for you to start understanding the human you are, it comes with um, the love and the support that you get from your family. For me, uh, it comes, you know, with my family, it comes with my mom, it comes with my dad. Instead of them, you know, criticizing me and judging me, they loved me for who I am. And they installed that in me, you know, to give it to others, to say, look, when someone is different, we celebrate them, we love them for who they are. But the most important thing is that as a parent or as a sister or as a brother out there, find it in your heart to understand your own people. So the advice it will be very simple. For one to gain confidence, you get it from your loved ones. I can relate so much to everything that you're saying. Like love is the answer to so many wounds that we can have. And when you're able to surround yourself with friends, family, people that are like-minded, that have that love and support for you, it makes everything so much easier. It's so empowering to hear you share your story right now, but um, why was it important for you to share it in your own words? Semenya's memoir, The Race to Be Myself, dives into the making of a barrier-breaking champion and navigating what it means to be a woman in sports and competing on her own terms. It's always important um, to share everything in your own words because if you look into my my history, particularly you know after I've won you know the world championship, everyone had to you know have a say. You know, my, my, my gender has been revealed, you know, in public. So let me do it my way. Let me tell people about my life. Let me tell people about my body. Let me tell people about the experience of my life. Let me tell people about what it means to be, you know, a success, regardless of, you know, 
challenges, you know, stumbling blocks, being denied, you know, blocked, being criticized, you know, judged, you mean racially abused, you know, being discriminated. It is very, very important for me to tell the story and narrate it how it's supposed to be. Not how it has been, you know, written on newspapers, but from horse's mouth to say, yes, I'm a woman, I am different, I'm born with internal gonads, and I'm all that, but it don't make me less a woman. I accept myself, I celebrate myself, and there's no one can do anything about it. Let's focus on the good. We're not going to give the haters, we're not going to give the naysayers, all the people who've hurt you, any yes. more airtime today. You said we need to come clean, and I completely agree. What are the things where you're like, don't do this, yeah. do this? For me as a woman to another, I'll say, look, uh, let's stop, you know, pretending or let's stop allowing people to give us a view of an opinion of how a woman should look like. We are different and yeah, we are born with our differences. So do you as other individual. You have your own differences, you have all those things. And that shouldn't, you know, separate us as women. We, we cannot draw a line to say, because you are black, I am white, you know, you have muscles, you have a deep voice, you are tall. You see, the minute you start, you know, rolling a carpet, you know, for, for, for those different becomes a problem. You know, you start talking about, yeah, I'm a first, you know, black woman or I'm a first white. Why, why does it have to be about that? And you look into men's sports, there are no questions like that. You, you get what I'm saying? So why only in women's yeah. sports, we need to start differentiating you know, the differences that we have in our bodies. Take me as I am, or get out of here. Easy as ABC. Mic drop. Yep. I <laughs> drop it. <laughs> Nothing else to add. Drop the mic. Everything. We can all learn from that. We can definitely make the sh change necessary. And we can have that shift of mindset that will allow us to grow as a community. So thank you. Oh, thank you guys. No, I appreciate it. And one last more thing that I want to say is that winning or no winning in a court case like this, I am a winner. I'm born a winner. Mere fact that I can go there, fight these big authorities, fight this old man, I've raised the awareness. People are aware of the situation. People know about the differences that we have in our bodies. People need to understand that sometimes when you fight a battle, it's not about winning the main cause. It's about winning other people's heart. Thank you so much for your time, Caster. Thanks for tuning into Flame Bearers. If you like what you're hearing, please leave us a positive review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. For more behind the scenes exclusive content, follow us on social media on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, X, whatever platform you're on. This summer in June, we'll be launching our exclusive series with women Olympians and Paralympians competing in Paris. So stay tuned.